Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the moon. I'm your host for this evening, Lawrence Ray, and I'm joined today by my fantastic co-host, Ricardo Martinez. Uh, but also we have a awesome guest today. We're interviewing CK Snarks, Christian, uh, general manager um, of the Bitcoin magazine and the Bitcoin conference. Uh, both come hand in hand. How are you doing today? Doing fantastic. How are you doing? Glad to hear it. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. Thanks. Yep. Just a uh, couple of days into COVID, uh, but you guys listening probably can't tell because uh, it's not hitting that badly. Smooth and clear, man. You sound fantastic. Buttery smooth. Thank you very much, sir. That's, uh, that's kind of you. Uh, but yeah, I guess to kick us off, I, I, I wanted to uh, just ask you quickly, really, uh, how, when it comes to obviously your role at Bitcoin Magazine uh, and obviously the the conference as well. Uh, you came in early 2018 to Bitcoin Magazine, uh, I believe. Could be wrong. Uh, what's the story behind that? Because obviously, you know, you've kind of it's quite. Um, I guess it's quite a big thing to kind of just come straight into Bitcoin Magazine as your first like crypto Bitcoin job, and then obviously you've worked your way up within what four years. What's the story behind all this? Like, I want to hear what happened and how you ended up doing this. Basically, what got you here? No, I mean. Uh... Great question. Uh, I've gotten kind of good at telling my my Bitcoin and Bitcoin career story, uh, but pretty much during 2017, during that run up to 20K, that's the first time that Bitcoin really caught my attention and I actually did some due diligence. Um, I uh, ended up you know, listening to hours and hours and hours of crypto and then Bitcoin podcasts and kind of in the span of discovering Bitcoin in October, of 2017 uh, and then like onboarding uh, through uh, November, uh, I kind of like quickly observed that, you know, Bitcoin's the real signal here. Uh, I was really capable of seeing through kind of the ICO craze, initial coin offering craze at the time, because I was working in Silicon Valley for what I would characterize as shitty startups. Uh, and I saw what it looked like to raise money in Silicon Valley. And I just really quickly identified that a lot of these ICO projects were shitty startups that were raising orders of magnitude more than they should. Started to say like, what's like Google, literally Googling what's wrong with ICOs, what's wrong with blockchain. The only people that were coming up were just complete haters on the space and then Bitcoin maximalists. Uh, so Bitcoin maximalists like uh, Tone Vase, uh, Jimmy Song, Ansel Lindner, um, I Vortex, I started listening to a lot of their content um, and that uh, really kind of set me on the course uh, to really appreciate, you know, Bitcoin specifically. Um, two weeks before Christmas, which is pretty much at the top of the 2017 bull market, like you can, when you guys can go back and look at the chart right now, if you look up like, you know, two weeks before Christmas, so that would be... Um, Oh, that be that would be uh, December. December. God, I can't do math right now. Eleventh. Uh, so uh, December eleventh. Uh, around there, I put in my two weeks uh, for work and I quit my job with absolutely no plan. Uh, so if you look at the chart, that is like within five days of like the top. So I quit my job at the actual Bitcoin top. Uh, I'm pretty sure all my coworkers were laughing at me for the subsequent months, uh, but I went to. Miami to the North American Bitcoin conference. Uh, it was hilarious. I, I would call it the North American shitcoin conference, but there was like banana coin posters and radiology chain and like just all kinds of just lunacy. But out of all of that, there was the Bitcoin magazine booth. Uh, I went over there, I immediately recognized the brand. Uh, I shook uh, everyone's hand. I said, what's up? My name's Christian. You know, I like Bitcoin. I live in San Francisco. I do sales. Uh, I got the CRO's card uh, and I proceeded to just hound him until he gave me a, a sales job. So I got that sales job uh, like mid-February. So it didn't take me that long to get a job in the space. Uh, and then from there, it's just been a journey uh, at BTC Inc. Uh, it's just an absolutely incredible company uh, with uh, an incredible founder, David Bailey, who has a really strong vision for Bitcoin and how uh, Bitcoin reaches the masses and how Bitcoin adoption, uh, you know, continues to move forward and the possibilities of Bitcoin as a global money. You know, he's already thinking about 
what happens after hyper Bitcoinization. So he's really inspiring. And through 2018 and 2019, as a company, we went from being like a multi coin company. We had like an event series called Distributed. We were involved in like ICOs in China and all this kind of stuff. And we just dumped all of that and we focused only on Bitcoin. So Bitcoin Magazine launching the Bitcoin conference. Uh, and I was a part of the conference team. So, you know, chugged along doing conferences, put on Bitcoin 2019, which was amazing, working on Bitcoin 2020. You know, it, it's in the history books that Bitcoin 2020 never happened. Uh, two weeks before it got canceled due to COVID restrictions and fears and stuff like that that were happening in the world. Everyone was kind of like in a panic. Uh, but, you know, we, we, we put all of our operating cash into these events. You know, we really, uh, we, we really go hard into the paint, especially in those early days when uh, the event was smaller. Uh, it was like life or death by the success of these events. So when you have Bitcoin 2020 canceled, you know, that's a tough time for a company. Um, really, we got down to the smallest our company could be. And that's when I flipped from, uh, you know, doing sales strictly to doing more like uh, management, team management, content creation, working on the Bitcoin magazine side. Uh, and then from there, like, honestly, we just kept building, you know, we, we, we gritted through that time. Uh, we found ways to, uh, you know, continue to get capital and to continue to get cash flow. Uh, and uh, we kept the brand alive. And, you know, fast forward to uh, 2021, we moved the Bitcoin conference to Miami. And uh, Bitcoin 2021 was an absolutely massive success. That's where Elsa, uh, President Bukele announced that he was going to pursue making the Bitcoin law, which ended up going into law and now is in, in, in practice in El Salvador. And that is the first country to adopt Bitcoin officially as legal tender. Um, and, you know, we pulled off Bitcoin 2022. Uh, and, you know, I find myself as the general manager adjacent to the president and reporting to the CEO um, of the entire business. So um, I think, you know, my story would say like, you know, find a company that you're passionate about, go all in, you know, stick through the bear market, which is upon us uh, here in uh, 2022. Uh, and then, you know, if you just grind hard on the other end, there's endless possibilities, especially if the company and the business is Bitcoin focused and, uh, and, and there's product market fit. Stick to the vision. I like it. That's a, uh, no, yeah, that's a, it's a good message uh, for anyone out there listening. If you believe and you want to, you want to go towards something, then keep pushing in that direction probably it's going to work out okay <laughs> probably um yeah like <laughs> it takes dedication though so like dedication is hard work plus like patience and and like sticking to it so uh the dedication pays off at the end of the you know even just one cycle in that you know i think that works for hodlers that works for builders so it, it's necessary i i like bitcoin magazine i think um it's one of the better uh, publications uh, what made you guys like kind of ditch the whole multi-coin thing and focus on Bitcoin, um, unlike other publications like CoinDesk or Cointelegraph? I think in late 2018, we had a like come to Jesus moment where it's like, hey, we're not differentiated. Like we've strayed from our roots. You know, I think what's always put Bitcoin Magazine on the map was a Bitcoin focus. Um, and, you know, we were really prominent and competitive during, you know, covering the block size wars and really like just educating people about Bitcoin. And it wasn't like, you know, I, I, I feel like the world, like this idea of like Bitcoin only and Bitcoin maximalism, like that has really evolved over time. So it's not like we were like, hey, we're straying from our roots by covering up the other cryptocurrencies. It's just like, First, the cryptocurrency space was only Bitcoin, and then it started adding other things. And we're like, hey, we're covering the space. It took some time for us to realize, hey, actually, we've strayed, identify that. And then two, there's this massive market opportunity, which is acknowledging that Bitcoin's the only signal, ignoring the noise, and focusing on Bitcoin. So at the time, 100% of our market competition was multi-coin and 0% of our market competition other than podcasters and independent content creators were really expressing the thesis that, you know, 80% of 90% of the company already believed in, which was that Bitcoin is the actual signal here and we should just focus on Bitcoin. So once we like made that realization, 
And then, you know, I think that was pretty early for a business. Now we are really seeing a lot of Bitcoin only businesses that are, you know, doing really well because of that distinction. But, you know, at the time, like, you know, there's very few businesses that um, had made that like kind of business thesis and actually took it to practice. So uh, once we made that and acknowledged that decision, things actually started getting way easier because we could, again, we were aligned with what we believed, but we could actually now differentiate because like, hey, you know, maybe we're not as fast as Coindesk about, you know, pumping out the biggest like, you know, news story about an ICO, but we're way better than all, you know, wh- name it about talking about Bitcoin and what's important in Bitcoin and, and talk, speaking to an audience that can already see through the noise, right? Uh, so it, it tur- we, I think it turned, we, we found a way to uh, lean in on Bitcoin and that kind of gave us an advantage in the marketplace. And we just have gone, we've continued to double, triple down on that sense. Um, and it's hilarious. No one is still really going after this market. You know, I mean, obviously there's a lot of amazing content creators that are working with companies. Uh, there are now a few different Bitcoin you know, publications are only focused on Bitcoin, but none of the larger players have changed their strategy. A- any of the, all the ones that were already there and were doing a multi-coin strategy, they're continuing and they're actually doubling down further. They're actually moving away from Bitcoin even more. Uh, so I don't know if any of y'all are going to be um, at the event happening in Austin later today, but like, do they even talk about Bitcoin at all in their marketing? I, I, I think, I don't think so. I've seen, I think, is it consensus coverage one it is, but I don't see much. Yeah, I've heard people saying they're going, but I don't actually know. I don't really know what it's actually about. Isn't it more Ethereum based? I think I'm not, not entirely certain. Um, hey, you can get some desk coin. <laughs> sounds good to me. No, I, I haven't yeah. been paying any attention so, to that sort of stuff. Um, so I wouldn't know, to be fair. Um, but I guess, um, have you, because obviously you said that at a time in, when was it, in 2020, when obviously the COVID happened, messed up the plans for the conference, uh, decreased the size. I mean, you know, you went through a period where it was like, hey, we've got to, you know, adapt to survive. Was there, were, were there any times then or even since then where people have gone like, hey, you know, maybe we should go back to doing altcoin, shitcoin stuff? Like, has anyone ever questioned it since then? Or has it always just been like, boom, Bitcoin only straight ahead, that's it, no matter what kind of thing? Yeah, no, no one's questioned. And honestly, like, it's made things so much easier because, you know, whoever didn't believe in that, they, you know, they went their own way. They found other opportunities that they preferred um, over time. And the people who were into it were into it. And then on top of that, we kept on hiring more Bitcoiners. So one of the best things that we that we've done is it's I would say it's not 100 percent strict policy, but it's, you know, the way that we view hiring is like, here's the job, like, you know, podcast editor, you know, are you a podcast editor and what's your competency on that skill set? And then what's your competency on the subject matter expertise around Bitcoin, right? And we weigh those, this, we actually weigh those the same. So like, if you're an editor, that's the best editor ever, but you have zero Bitcoin subject matter expertise, and then there's an editor that's a little bit worse, maybe on their exact skill set, but has an enormous amount of Bitcoin subject expertise, they might actually stack up pretty well. And we might actually consider the, the weaker editor who's a Bitcoiner. Um, and I can go into multiple reasons why we actually do that calculation that way. But um, long story short is we just kept hiring more and more Bitcoiners. So yeah, of course, we wouldn't question that. And we're just, you know, whatever internally we're creating an echo chamber where we don't care about the altcoins i think we're having intelligent conversation on like you know now altcoins are starting to adopt bitcoin it's kind of hilarious to watch that uh which again shows the difference like bitcoin is actually commodity internet money and these altcoins are communities companies startups something else uh so like how do we cover that like because that actually is kind of relevant to bitcoin so we're trying to like you know figure out like what's the appropriate editorial of uh, voice uh, to express in regards to uh, shit coins adopting Bitcoin. But um, beyond that, you know, we're just focused on Bitcoin. Like that is the signal. I don't think that it's a very disputable thing. I think there's a lot of uh, very fundamental uh, type of indicators and re- <clears throat> rationales uh, onto why Bitcoin is the signal and why it is a good business calculation to focus on the signal and ignore the noise.
one of the things I really like about Bitcoin Magazine's content is that you guys are not scared of taking deep dives into like technical uh, aspects of Bitcoin or, um, you know, things like censorship resistance, like topics that are really important to Bitcoiners. Who's responsible for like that direction in your guys' content? I mean, that's that's at the core of what we do. Like when we made the conscious decision to focus on Bitcoin, we acknowledge like, hey, there is an audience that is the most influential audience in the space. That's the Bitcoin maximalists, the hardcore committed uh, thought leaders and uh, and subject matter experts and the people enthusiasts who spend all their time learning about Bitcoin. So that's our foundation. We have to speak to and be respected by those people first before we can authoritatively, you know, move up the funnel. Um, so, you know, it was, you know, Aaron Van Wordham talking about the, the blockchain uh, or the, the Bitcoin block size war and documenting that and doing real journalism and talking to real developers and, and making it understandable for a more lay audience. Um, like that's at our roots. So um, it really was just go, go back to our roots and like, you know, and, and uh, double down on that. And, you know, that's helped us hire people that appreciate that. Pete Rizzo and Amcios uh, are two to, you know, I, that come off the top of my head. Uh, and then they've just continued to build amazing stuff. Uh, Econo Alchemist, he's a, a fantastic contributor that works with us. Uh, he puts out the deepest, the deepest, most thorough privacy uh, and Bitcoin user guides out there. So, um, you know, we're going to continue investing in that kind of content too. And again, no one else is like literally no one else with a, with a large, you know, uh, website or Twitter profile is doing this. Like it's unbelievable. There's only upstarts in us. So, um, Sure. Uh, we'll keep picking up the low-hanging fruit. Thanks. Rizzo's uh, recent article with Safedine was incredible. I, I enjoyed that. It was a thoroughly interesting read. Rizzo is, a, is just an absolute stud. So I don't know what else to say. Uh, potentially genius status. So Some high praise. It sounds like you guys need some uh, competitors. Uh, it sounds like you're asking for competitors right now. Which is, I uh, mean... <laughs> I'm not asking for it, but it, it's unbelievable that we, it hasn't really emerged yet. No, I gotcha. And um, yeah, I guess it is interesting because it's been, yeah, it's been what, 2018. So four, four years or so since the change was decided to go like fully Bitcoin. Because obviously Bitcoin magazines had quite a lot of development over the years. Like it was started by two guys who went and found Ethereum, right? So like, it's kind of like, it's kind of weird how it's like adapted and it's, it's interesting to see how it's gone. But I think it's, well, it looks like it's definitely gone in the right path um because as a as a name the brand name has like very good reputation um something which i i have uh, i think i saw it um saw it today but i'd seen it before as well and i'd always like kind of thought oh if i ever make you know hundreds of hundreds of thousands of uh, dollars worth of bitcoin then i might pick up one of these is the uh, the first edition uh, of the bitcoin magazine which you guys sell and it goes for a thousand bucks on the site um quick question on that one um how many how many do you know how many copies there are of them available because obviously i assume you guys aren't going to be reprinting them so do you know how many copies there are actually available left and then second question onto that like do you guys have any more print copies coming in soon that you can tell us about like what the next uh print version of the magazine is going to be and, and when that's coming awesome questions and uh yeah so the first edition, obviously, we're not going to reprint that. That is the that is the original. Um, you know, we're we're in the low hundreds of those available. Um, and then, if you actually go to our site, you can buy the entire collection. Um, uh, you know, first first through twenty fourth uh, edition. So there's been twenty four Bitcoin magazines so far. Um, so you can get all of those. Uh, so that, I think that's actually a great deal. But you can kind of effectively see which uh, of the original Bitcoin magazines are more abundant based on the price. So, um, you know, effectively, we kind of have a tier of scarcity uh, for all of them. And we uh, and, and that's kind of how we price them out. But yeah, uh, the first edition is one, one of the most popular, one of the most iconic. Uh, and uh, there's very few of them left. So uh, if you can collect them, this is the time to do it. Uh, we were talking, to, I was talking to a gentleman at Bitcoin 22. He was buying one for himself 
literally two minutes later came back and was like, all right, I need to get two. So um, they're, you know, the collectors are definitely taking them off the shelves and, you know, that thousand dollar price tag, it might go up soon too. So um, as, as the scarcity kicks in, you know, we increase the price in order to, you know, allow people to continue to collect them into the future. But um, you know, the value of that magazine, I think is going to continue to, maybe it's not going to go up with Bitcoin. Like it's not going to track as much as Bitcoin. You know, you should hodl Bitcoin instead, but um, you know, as Bitcoin gets more valuable and relevant, hopefully Bitcoin magazine maintains its place as uh, a leading voice amongst like Bitcoin enthusiasts uh, in the Bitcoin world. Uh, that magazine is going to increase in value for sure. Uh, I have a copy myself. It's uh, it's it's framed. I'm, I'm actually moving, so you can't see anything behind me. But um, normally, I have like a shrine of Bitcoin behind me, including that magazine. But now it's all packed up. Um, but yeah, in terms of new magazines. You know, you can continue to collect Bitcoin Magazine right now. You can get we're we're doing a issue every single quarter, um, and you can subscribe to that annual subscription for like fifty bucks. So uh, those magazines, you know, we should. I honestly think we should have a collector version where you know you get it's you get two magazines every shipment. You get one that you can read, and they're absolutely they're thick, they're beautiful. You want to put it on your coffee table. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And then you have one that's like plastic wrapped and sealed uh, that you can save because, you know, that collection is going to go up in value. And this like, you know, this new version of Bitcoin magazine that we launched last year with the El Salvador edition, it's it's absolutely a fantastic product. It's, it's just head and shoulders above any magazine we've ever produced before. Uh, and now we're going on to our third issue of the kind of like the re, the reboot. Um, and this is gonna the third issue. So it went the El Salvador issue, the moon, the to the moon issue, which dropped at Bitcoin 22. Uh, and then now we're dropping the censorship resistant issue. And there's another one that's already in the works for next for the following quarter. So uh, it's just incredible to see the product come together. It's an amazing read. Uh, the safety dean special was in the to the moon issue. Uh, Ricardo mentioned that. And uh, there's some really, really great stuff in this censorship resistant issue. So uh, if you don't have a sub, you, you're going to want to get that. Go to the Bitcoin Magazine store online, get a subscription, shipping internationally. Uh, if you can also get it at your local bookstore. It's at Barnes and Nobles and another big uh, retailer in Canada. Uh, so uh, trying to get Bitcoiners, what, you know, the ability to get their hands on this future collectible, but also just incredible you know, piece of Bitcoin in this moment. In an era where everything is going digital and you're discussing a digital money that could possibly phase out paper money, um, why did you guys decide to print paper copies? You know, BitcoinMagazine.com, like that's happening every single day. So that's absolutely digital. Um, but I just think when the world is so digital, Bitcoiners love collectibles. So, you know, it's not like we're trying to put the news in this magazine. Uh, we're really trying to every single issue have something that's immortal, right? So have this thing be something where you pick it up and you're like, wow, one, this is immortal, but two, this is what it was like when the Canadian truckers had to use Bitcoin, you know, in, in 2021 and or in 2022. And that was part of Bitcoin's journey to relevance. So like that's history. And, you know, Bitcoin, we, we just think Bitcoins are going to want to collect that. So uh, really our entire offering in terms of our store is like merch and swag and then collectibles. So uh, I do think that the Bitcoin magazine in print is going to be an amazing and continue to be an amazing collectible for Bitcoiners and Bitcoin history. Uh, you know, the first, I think that our, we have an issue in the Smithsonian uh, in the history of money section. And I think that that's going to continue. Uh, so, you know, and it's, it's awesome. It's just awesome too. Like, there's no better way to like meet someone and be like, hey, my company is real. Bitcoin's real. This is history than handing them that magazine. It's just like it's, it's an incredible physical orange pill. Uh, so, you know, it's not everything that we do. We're very digital, but, you know, it's a small thing that we do that I think it actually it, it punches way above its weight, if you will, if you will. Yeah, and I guess as things go more digital and as, uh, you know, we're told we're going to own nothing and be really happy about it, then it's actually sometimes nice to have like a physical copy of something. That's for sure. You know, uh, you, you will own Bitcoin and you'll own Bitcoin magazine and I guarantee you'll be happy. <laughs> Sounds like a solid uh, guarantee. I can I can see, I can hear the sales. Fuck the weave. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no, I like it, man. I like it. Um, I think like um, I've got like a lot more going around in my head about the the conference now because we've been we've been hammering at you about the magazine. But I guess one the question I wanted to ask you, I guess um, a pretty straightforward question, but like how how are you guys like making money basically? Like, do you guys allow like sponsored posts and stuff like that, or is it mainly just like, how how is it that you're obviously you, you, I'm assuming you do fundraising and there's there's various like stuff that all magazines that I don't know if there's anything different that you guys do or what's the simple kind of formula, I guess, for you. Uh, so we don't do sponsored content, uh, sponsored content's weird. You know, ultimately sponsored content is someone wanting to pay you. So that way they can get a do follow link on your website that has high authority. That's just like that. That sucks. We, we're not into that. So we don't do sponsored content um, at all. Um, but you know, we, we do run an advertising led business, right? So that means our content is all editorial, but there is advertising that runs on top of it. Uh, we also sell our own products, right? So, uh, the Bitcoin conference, the biggest Bitcoin conference in the world, you know, tickets to that are a nice revenue generator. Um, obviously sponsorship for that. That's, uh, all, all the biggest companies in the space spend a considerable budget on, on the conference. Um, and that, that's a, a massive driver and we are building and, uh, constantly creating new and better products for companies to sponsor. So, um, we have some new ones rolling out. BitMEX just sponsored Bitcoin magazine pro, which is our premium markets intelligence newsletter. Um, so, uh, you know, as we continue to kind of build out our suite of products, there's more products for uh, businesses in the space that are Bitcoin focused to to uh, reach our audience. Okay, so from like the magazine perspective, it is yeah um, simple enough in a sense that it's like the sponsorship around the magazine and and, and advertisements etc. And then obviously there's the other products, right? So so not sponsored posts, sorry, but like um, adverts. Around, around. Yeah, yeah, sorry, that's what I mean. Um, and then obviously there's other products. So it's like, you know, the, as you said, the email newsletter and then the conference and there's various different things you're building out that help bring in more and more revenue. And I imagine you'll totally. keep innovating. As you Our go business along. has multiple streams of revenue. Uh, you know, just to put things into perspective, Bitcoin 22, like the amount of capital that goes through that event is on the round of multiple fundraising rounds for a large unicorn company. So like that by itself is a massive thing for our business, right? That is a business by itself. And obviously we want to be as much more anti-fragile than having a once year profitable event. You know, we want to have shows and newsletters and all this kind of stuff. So uh, a lot of it is in development. A lot of it is currently available. I mean, you can hit um, you can hit sales at btcmedia.org if if you want to advertise with us. We have a lot of great products too. So, but um, you know, you can advertise in the print magazine, and that has global reach and uh, is a, is like it's almost like a mortal advertising. So you're not only going to drive sales and branding now, but uh, people will look back and be like, "Wow, that company was a part of the history of Bitcoin." Uh, so. Uh, there's a lot of incredible advertising and, uh, you know, it's awesome to be at such a young media company and have such developed media stream or uh, revenue streams and not have to be uh, dependent on, you know, investors or, you know, some, someone writing a big check in order for your unsustainable business to maintain. Bitcoin uh, 2022 was a massive event. Um, what goes into organizing an event like that? Like, how, how do you guys go about it? You know, there is a, there is a team of 40 people that scales up to a thousand hands uh, for the actual event. Um, there's a multi-million dollar budget. Uh, there are years of negotiating with vendors and venues and cities and building relationships. Um, it's nine to 12 months of just heads down work on one project. Uh, so... I mean, anyone who's put on an event that it reaches the magnitude of, you know, tens of thousands of people, you know, it's, it's no joke. Every detail matters. The public scrutiny is insane. Uh, the city of Miami uh, in Miami Beach said that, like, on an order of magnitude, this was the most covered event that's ever happened in Miami Beach's history. Um, 
So like that takes a year to make happen, you know, and that takes having the best brand in the world, which is Bitcoin um, and <laughs> acknowledging that you should focus on that. Um, you know, for years before, um, before it kind of really hit this point in the market. So, I mean, it, it's a lot of work, you know, talk to someone who does money 2020 CIS, any of these massive events, you know, it's crazy. So, um, it, it's crazy that I have three under my belt as well. So, uh, happy to go bigger and better Bitcoin 23. We're announcing dates and venue very soon. And we have some more surprises for, uh, for the Bitcoiners out there. So you mentioned the Bukele announcement. And then uh, this year, we also saw that um, Madeira, the island in Portugal, announced. And then um, also in Honduras, there was the, um, I forget, the Prospera, I think it's called, the um, autonomous community that that they're building it in Honduras, announced that they were going to be adopting Bitcoin also. Um, What do you think about this phenomenon where the conference is kind of like the place where people are making these kind of announcements? We, I wish we got the Central African Republic announcement. That would have been absolutely epic, but no one saw that coming. We were joking around that, like, who went to the Central African Republic? Oh, no one? Man, maybe we should stop sending Bitcoin to these places and just let Bitcoin do its thing. But, uh, you know, that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a platform for Bitcoin Signal to kind of congregate around. So um, I think the industry needed kind of this annual heartbeat uh, we are honored that we've built a platform that the industry is kind of uh, coalescing around. And we understand that that's sensitive and that uh, if we don't continue to kill it on our end, that zeitgeist will move away. You know, the industry and the space and the Bitcoin ecosystem doesn't really owe our event anything. But as long as we continue to put the biggest, best event that's most Bitcoin focused, that is where Robin Hood is going to want to show up to try to please Bitcoiners and, and show them that they're Bitcoin focused. That's where BitPay is going to say, hey, we're aligning with BTC and we're announcing Lightning. Um, you know, that's where Jack Maulers is going to, you know, enable uh, a country to come online to Lightning and, and you know, bless us with, uh, you know, having the announcement happen at our conference. You know, I think there's a reason he's announcing it at our conference and not a different conference. And that's because, you know, we created a platform that, um, that, you know, inspires and gets him excited. So um, I think it's just about continuing to do that. So uh, I think we have a great, we're we're possession to do that, but, um, you know, it's, it's not, it's never going to be handed to us on the silver platter. You mentioned like a couple of um, reasons as to why uh, different companies and, and, well, just various people would want to come to the conference and why it's gaining like a good reputation for exactly what we just said, like El Salvador announcing legal tender and things like that. Um, when it comes to, if I'm listening to this podcast and I am pretty new to Bitcoin, I don't know, maybe I only sort of worked out what the hell it is about a month ago. And I'm listening to this. Uh, why should I go to the next Bitcoin conference? And then similarly, like the second part is almost a separate question. I'm someone who's, you know, I don't know, I, I, I've known about Bitcoin for six years. I'm super into it. I feel like I know lots. I've read Mastering Bitcoin and Crypto Economics, you know, I, but why should I go to this physical event if I'm the expert? You know, why, why should these two various camps of people who might be listening right now, uh, I guess there might be separate reasons, but why should they come to the conference? Like, what, what is it that they will gain from it? Oh, man, so much to gain, so much to gain. First and foremost, if you are in any way looking to get your foot in the door in this industry professionally, it is an absolute requirement. There is no better way to get a job than to go to Bitcoin conferences in general, meeting people in meet space in general. There's no better way to get a job. And then that's how I got my job. I actually went to a shitcoin conference and got a Bitcoin job out of it. This is the ultimate Bitcoin event. This like that event that I went to was like 2000 people. This event, this past uh, iteration was 25,000 people, and it was quite literally every single business that had a marketing budget that was in the Bitcoin space. And the ones that didn't have a marketing budget were still there as attendees. So like BitRefill was there. I mean, y'all, y'all were activated at the event and a lot of other companies, like every single, like I, I can't even uh, list them all. They were all there. So uh, that is the ultimate opportunity to network. Uh, the Bitcoin conference is just one event that's happening in 
the, you know, that location for that entire week. So usually the entire week leading up to the Bitcoin conference, there are multiple other conferences happening, tons of hangouts, tons of meetups, tons of different events, beef steaks, barbecues, dinners, you name it, you know, Robert Breedlove and Jordan Peterson hangouts, you know, all this different stuff. Like, don't even come to the conference, just go to Bitcoin week. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, you have to be there. That is where the energy coalesces. It's palpable. I'm not sure if either of you were, were in Miami this year, but everyone that was there said like the, you could just feel the energy. Uh, it's kind of like this peak life feeling, and you just can't get it unless you're there. Uh, and people seriously have a like post conference, like depression, like it's legitimately a thing. You, if you don't believe me, just tweet about it and people and like very prominent names will talk about it. It is a real thing. Like it is like living in the Citadel and hyper Bitcoinization for a weekend. So if you're an enthusiast, like you have to go, go wear a mask. If you're in them, who cares? You can, you can buy a ticket with a throwaway email, as long as you Keep the as long as you have the email long enough to get our email, uh, our email to you with the actual PDF, you're good. You no one needs to know your real name. You can have a you can wear glasses and a face mask on. Plenty of people do that. Plenty of other people just go and you know, as themselves, whatever. It, it's just a fantastic environment, you know. Like, what imagine just walking down through the lobby and you bump into Adam back. Like, this is the type of environment that we're talking about. And he's just hanging out. Like, seriously, he's just hanging out trying to meet people. So uh, it's really, really unbelievable. And honestly, I just don't know how much longer this is going to last. Like, at some point, Bitcoin is just going to be part of everything. And there isn't going to be, you know, there aren't internet festivals. I mean, there are, but it's just, you know, <laughs> it's really not the same thing. So like the moments that you can walk down the hall, bump into Adam back, rub shoulders with Safi Dean Avmus, all these people that are just absolute legends in this space uh, and have a conversation with them and just be around this community of a burgeoning technology like that. This is fleeting. You, ha you have to appreciate what that's like. And, you know, again, getting jobs, starting companies, Swan Bitcoin was started out of meeting people at Bitcoin 2019 in a presentation that Corey Clipson gave. Like, that's just one example of millions, right? Um, so millions is maybe exaggeration, hundreds, thousands. So um, it's going to continue. Bitcoin 23 is going to be incredible. And even if you don't come to our event, go to other Bitcoin events, go to your Bitcoin meetup, because, you know, this is just the biggest of, you know, uh, uh, tons of social gatherings that are happening in the Bitcoin space. We've seen consensus and other uh, crypto and Bitcoin conferences kind of move around and, you know, one year it'll be in New York. Uh, this year it's in Austin. Do you guys have any plans to branch outside of Miami or go international with the conference? We want to be a the global Bitcoin conference. We don't want to be constrained to one city. Uh, with that being said, Miami is an amazing city for us to be in right now. So uh, we're not fighting the fact that Miami is going heads deep into Bitcoin and the crypto industry. We're not fighting the fact that Florida is a freedom state. We're not fighting the fact that there's great parties there and you can travel there easily. So we love Miami. We we want to continue to work with Miami, uh, but we absolutely are. An, we are an international, global, world conference for Bitcoin, um, and we're going to be rolling out a lot of awesome stuff to bring the Bitcoin conference experience to people around the globe. Uh, so stay tuned for more announcements around that. But um, yeah, we're excited to, you know, bring the Bitcoin conference to many cities into the future. So uh, again, more announcements to come throughout this year, uh, but we have some awesome plans. I've got a question for you that I hope you answer in honest, if that with honesty. Um, so I've been involved in the crypto space. I say crypto because obviously it's, you know, I've, I've worked with Bitcoin and other crypto cryptocurrencies for a while. And there's some crazy stories that I've got to tell in my time. But obviously, you know, you, you've been involved in organizing some big conferences, okay, with many different people. And I'm sure many are wonderful degenerates. I'm sure many are wonderfully smart, simple, quiet, calm people. 
have you, what is, and you can obviously decide to not tell me if you don't want to, what is the most fucked up story that you've got or the craziest story you've got? Like there's gotta be something like a war story or even just whether it's, I don't know, behind the scenes or just like something crazy someone did at the conference. You're like, what the hell? Or like someone shot on stage. I don't know. Just <laughs> give me the craziest story or the weirdest no, I, I story got, I got, you've got. I got stories. I got stories. Um, so here's one. Bitcoin 21 one of our more notorious speakers is Floyd Mayweather, who is fighting a fight which he lost the next day. Um, and for, you know, we deal with a lot of different people at this conference. It's a massive stage. People want to get on stage and show whatever they're showing. And we're always trying, we're emailing them. We're telling them rules like Bitcoin only. There's a Bitcoin conference. You don't go to a, you know, a cooking show, a cooking conference and talk about, you know, uh homework or or taxes you know you, you so like stay on brand right stay on topic so floyd mayweather a uh let's just call it uh a, a, a wild card and we all knew he was going to be a wild card rolls in deep with his squad of his posse wearing a scam t-shirt literally it's ethereum max which is a verified scam i, I believe multiple people have been sued by the sec regarding promotion of ethereum max multiple celebrities so he's rolling in to our conference backstage with ethereum max uh, i'm not actually part of this story but our head of programming at the time brandon green who's our chief of staff now he he like looks at him right away and brandon is a little bit taller than me probably 25 pounds less skinnier than me he is like he's a tall lanky guy um you know, he, he like looks at Floyd Mayweather, you know, at a time what potentially one of the, the best boxers in the world uh, at one point is like, was the best. And he's like, no, you got to take your shirt off. You can't go on stage with that shirt. <laughs> so he calls me up. I'm at the actual merch store. He's like, I need every single shirt in uh, every single style and shirt in Excel at the backstage immediately. Uh, so that way we could try to like appease Floyd and give him a shirt that he's willing to wear. I run back there with all these shirts. Brandon is, you know, is, you know, trying to appease Floyd, but be like, but actually you're not going on stage with that shirt on. You can't go on stage with the Ethereum Mac shirt on. Um, so I'm offering him all these Bitcoin magazine shirts and these different Bitcoin shirts. He's like, no, I don't want any of that. And then eventually he just like looks at one of the guys in his posse and he's like, give me your shirt. And he puts on his 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 homie shirt, which just like some random design on it. He goes up on stage and proceeds to just completely just screw it up. It, it absolutely sucked, you know. Despite that, the moment was still classic. Him going up on stage and 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 doing that is still it's still a classic moment. Um, but yeah, it would have been a lot worse if he was wearing a Ethereum Max, Max T shirt. So we're very thankful that Brandon had the guts you know, to stand up to him and his crew. Like, it's not just him, it's him and a crew. And be like, no, you're not getting on stage with that t-shirt on. Damn, man. Yeah, that's that takes balls. Like, that's that's the, uh, that's probably, I mean, arguably the best uh, pound for pound boxer of all time. And yeah, as you said, a whole crew of people probably taller, bigger and scary, as scary as he is looking wise. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I consider myself quite ballsy, but I'm not sure I could just go like, you're not wearing that body, like without at least a couple of people with me, you know, like. Just like, you're not getting on stage. Sorry. <laughs> like, no, you can, you can leave now if you don't want to take your shirt off. That's crazy. It's like um, I'm. I was imagining that it was going to turn into. I don't know if you know the uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, like Mike Tyson, like classic WWF thing from back in the day, where they're like brawling and everything. It was like a classic where Mike Tyson goes on, and then he's all like, "This is my ring." I was imagining it's going to get like that. Like this is my conference, and then like, <laughs> you know, like your buddy's scrapping with uh, scrapping with him, but. Luckily, that didn't happen by the sounds of it. So, uh, no, I like it. That's a, that's, a, that's a good story. That's a good enough story for me. I'll, I'll take that one for sure, man. Um, I guess uh, I've got something, again, another random ass question that I was uh, thinking of before I came on here. Because I remember, I, I, again, I could be wrong here because I don't have anything to back this up. Um, but I, I swear that you guys had an office in Kiev at one point. I might be wrong. You can tell me if I'm completely wrong. But I swear I remember seeing something about that like a while ago like a year or years ago uh so i was interested to see like if you still had that like before the whole 
war situation broke out and like how that would have affected that situation. I just thought, I don't know, I thought it could be interesting to see like how you guys, if, if you had to deal with anything with that or what, what happened around that. We actually do have Bitcoin Magazine in Ukrainian and Russian. Uh, we are in the process of launching that website. Uh, I just spoke to the general manager of our satellite, our satellite team there. Uh, right now, it's currently like four people. Um, she actually, for the first, for this this week, is the first time she's back in the official Kiev office. Uh, so. Uh, I think that team is going to move forward as a remote team once the lease ends. But uh, she was actually in Germany and she went back to Kiev and today she called me from the office. So um, she's at the office. But yeah, obviously, you know, we saw Ukraine is a Bitcoin and crypto native country. You know, they they're at the heart of a lot of conflict. They uh, are not on the euro system. They uh, have an international tech savvy population. Uh, and even before the war, they were prime for Bitcoin. So we wanted to be there. We wanted to have Bitcoin content, Bitcoin magazine content in Ukrainian for the Ukrainian people. Uh, obviously, the war was a massive, uh, you know, deterrent and a horrible uh, thing that is still ongoing. But uh, yeah, we, we're still pushing forward. I'll get you the link actually to our, our Ukrainian Twitter account. Um, that's, uh, we have that Telegram and a bunch of stuff like that. Uh, and a website is coming uh, as quickly as possible. Nice. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm glad I wasn't just making it out because I swear I'd seen something about it before. Aside from the Russian Ukrainian market, are you guys in any other uh, like emerging markets like Latin America or Africa or anything like that? It's been a journey just to get to where we are within the English market. And now there's so much demand for our content in every other language in all other markets. Uh, we are trying to scale responsibly. Uh, so we have a great partner that's enabled us to go to Ukraine. Uh, we're hoping to scale out in other languages, and we're hoping to work with other partners to enable us to uh, reach other languages. But uh, we're trying to take a, uh, let's just say, a measured, uh, a measured path to doing that because it's just an enormous amount of complexity. Uh, and, you know, I, I still feel like we're a startup in what we're doing within our core business. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, yeah, that, that, that's my answer. People are always reaching out to me like, uh, can I start a business, like a Bitcoin magazine arm in Asia? Can I start it, you know, in, in you know, I get a ton in Portuguese or in Spanish. Uh, so we are actively vetting opportunities and we're trying to expand, but uh, we're trying to do that responsibly. Yeah, if you go too quick, then uh, you'll end up probably having some issues on translation or legal problems or all sorts of issues, or then the quality gets reduced drastically and all sorts of crap. So uh, quality smart. assurance is a big deal. Yeah, 100%. That makes a lot of sense, especially if, as well if you're dealing with someone that you don't necessarily know, right? Like they could just be cold approaching you and you have no idea how, how it's going to go. And yeah, there's a whole lot of uh, issues. So that makes a lot of sense, but it'd be cool to see it in, you know, 100 plus uh, languages printed out and everything that'd be uh, badass to see like a copy and then maybe you could do like a rerun of the first edition but not in english in all the other languages or something like that that'd be kind of cool ck if people want to follow you on social media like what's your twitter um, how can they get their hands on a printed copy of bitcoin magazine can you give us all that kind of info so uh get your hand on a printed copy of bitcoin magazine go to store.bitcoinmagazine.com uh, you can follow me on Twitter at CK underscore snarks. So that's CK underscore S N A R K S. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you can follow Bitcoin magazine at Bitcoin magazine. You can follow the conference at the Bitcoin conf. Uh, and yeah, hit me up. If you want a job in the space, we're hiring a ton of different roles, uh, jobs dot b.tc is where our latest job postings are i think there's like 10 up there right now we're also post those on bitcoinerjobs.com uh and yeah you know i have the best job in the world you know we give a platform to bitcoin plebs to write so actually if you want to contribute if you want to post an opinion piece to bitcoin magazine hit us up editor at bitcoinmagazine.com and uh, i get to hire bitcoiners to bitcoin all day so uh, i have the best job in the world between those two things so uh, I feel blessed and uh, love to hear feedback about what we're doing at Bitcoin Magazine. So hit me up whenever. Mm -hmm.